Hey, what is going on, guys? It's Friday, so you know what that means. Another Hi. episode of Millennial with Billy and Mel. What's going on, guys? We're really excited to be here. We have a really exciting show today for you. Uh, a, a big announcement uh, from the we're adding another brand to the Millennial uh, sphere, right? And so we're really yes. excited about that. Um, but we're also going to be talking about some technology. Mm -hmm. um it's it, it, it before uh we jumped on here today me and mel were just kind of talking about it so it'll be interesting to get maybe brandon will be on that would be interesting yeah uh, to have him <laughs> on, uh you know addition. so um but uh but anyways guys we we hope that you enjoy today's show and if you are coming on for the first time uh, make sure you comment who you are where you're coming in from if you're listening please share this with family and friends we really do appreciate it um but before we get into the big announcement and before we get into technology, Mel, what's going on? How are you doing? Um, I'm good. I actually was really excited that the sun came out like three days this week. <laughs> I don't know if it was just yesterday or the day before, but something happened and I woke up. I'm like, oh my goodness, the sun is shining. I was literally skipping like a little kid and a couple people that I had been texting, I, um, you know, I just said like, I feel this, this energy and this excitement and um, just really good week just with, you know, productivity. But I feel like that, um, you know, I had been talking about that seasonal depression or whatever with the winter and it being so gray for like mm. so long that this week it's actually this, it's sunny outside right now. So, um, so it's exciting, but yeah, just getting some Valentine's day cards together. I'm going to post oh, a yeah, bunch of the, new packs. Like <laughs> it is. And your favorite day. <laughs> yes. It is being facetious, everybody really <laughs> has a love, love, hate, get it, love, hate relationship with Valentine's Day. But yeah, what about you? I mean, it it's been I mean, it, it's just been a crazy, crazy week. Um, busy, super busy, lots of clients meeting new people, business is starting to really take off. Um, giving you an update on uh, 75 hard. Yes. Um, we are day 27 for Megan and I, and we have not missed anything. Good job. I'm so proud uh, of you guys. Um, and we are just, I mean, the, I mean, I think I'm, I think I started, uh, basically at 197. I'm now at 188. Wow. Good so for you. yeah. And Megan's lost a lot. So it's, it's just, it's been Feeling real fun. Good. Yeah. And we're just, you know, we've gotten into a groove. Um, so it's, it's been fun. Like, it's like, honestly, the walk at night has been really awesome. Um, and so, you know, even when it's cold outside, I think I posted a picture in the battlefield group. Uh, it was that night that it was, it was the day it snowed and right. then it turned into rain. Right. Man, we, we went walking, right. It was a miserable night, but right. we, we still it got snow. it and, 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 and yeah, and it snowed and, uh, yeah. So we actually, Part of our workout was shoveling the driveway. Which counts. We were outside. It was it was extraneous. Uh, and then we finished it with a walk. I remember shoveling years ago when it was really bad and I just couldn't move my arms for three days. How yeah. Um, so, but it was, like I said, it was, it was cool. Um, but like I said, a lot of stuff is going on. Good. And, Very good. And, uh, and I'm popping up. I found the meme. So uh, that's Pretty what I was good. doing. If you guys were watching my art eyes dart back and forth, uh, yeah. uh, get, getting the meme ready. Uh, nothing yeah. like a millennial wait until the last second, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, all good. But, you picked uh, the topic but today, kind of like spontaneously today, so that's good. Yeah, and it, and it kind of came today. Um, you know, we were going to have a guest on today, but that, that kind of, you know, life happens, so we, yeah. we got to make a pivot. Um, but uh, – I guess I'll tee it up, right? Um, the big announcement, yes. right, for for Millennial. Uh, you know, one of the big topics that, you know, one of my passions is talking about finances, especially helping yes. millennial families. And so, you know, we have What's Brewing with Billy. We have Why Not with Mel. Yep. But we're adding another segment, another show to this. Um, and I'm just going to pop it up on the screen here. Whoa. And, the, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Millennial presents the money talk, the talk we should have had. I um, love it. 
I mean, I made the logo, guys. So yes, I'm not, yes. So, I didn't uh, know about it. I'm not surprised, but. <laughs> plug for Mel. She that's that's some of her work, there, guys. So if you want to, you know, uh, talk to her about her cards and stuff like that, you can do <laughs> yeah. that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I was sitting. How it, how it came about is I was sitting down and I was looking at. Uh, I, you know, I really wanted to start some, uh, a podcast dedicated to helping millennials with their money I love or starting it. or starting a show of, of some of some kind. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember Megan and I just sitting around and she she said something. Oh, I remember we, we have to have a uh, me and Megan. We have a monthly meeting where we talk about budget and how, how spending yeah. and stuff like that. And she says, oh, we haven't had the money talk yet. Oh. And the light bulb just went off in my head. I was just like, the money talk. I and the first it. thing that ran through my head was, the second thing that ran through my head was, is like, it's the talk we should have had, right? right. We had the birds and the bees talk. <laughs> yes. I right? love it. I mean, yeah, don't people, I mean, aren't those things that you need to be talking about, especially like before you even, you know, maybe not seriously, but like engaged and or married that, you know, you recommend that people, you know, I don't even know recommend. I would say that it's almost like necessary or required, you know, yeah. to have that conversation. So I love it. Yeah. No, I, I love, like, I love it because it's funny. It fits me, right? Like the money talk, yeah. like if you know my personality, you know, that's kind I of right it. in line with it. And so, I mean, it's still in the infant stages. I'm still planning some content and stuff like that. But what my plan for it is, is to bring on other financial professionals from nice. all other aspects of, of, the financial world, all types of, you know, you know, real estate investors to, you know, mortgage people to bankers to anything that touches the finance world. I think it would be important for, for millennials to hear because I think our relationship is just jacked up with money. Oh, it is. I mean, I, you know, I admitted like I, that was, I printed out, you know, all my little post-its I say and my quotes that I have. And one of them was, you know, because I got out of debt, I made my last payment last year, earlier last year. Um, that I had done a, like a consolidation for, but I put on like this thing about one of the relationships that I'm mending this year is the most important one, my relationship with money. So I can like, you know, get back into saving and doing a lot of um, things that I understand more. But this is great because there's so many other people that are, you know, haven't even started that journey or are really needing um, to feel like they're not alone. And I think I even texted you like a week or so ago about some topics that we might even be able to do some workshops or some things with getting, you know, some other, you know, companies involved. Like, so this is, per it's just literally exactly what I think I was thinking too, because they're things that I want help on, right? Like I want to get to the next level. So I think that you having like, you know, being able to listen to it and be a part of it. And then, you know, maybe, you know, you know, we've talked about uh, trying to do some type of a, um, an event this year. Uh, maybe later this year, we could tie that in where people, you know, there could be a whole section that could be the money talk mm -hmm. there. I think yeah. that would be awesome. I, I love it. I love it. I, I just think there's so much room for that uh, in, in, in this world, you know, and it's just, there's a lot of podcasts, there's a lot of shows about money and stuff like that. But I think from where the perspective I'm going to come from is a very emotional stance and not so yes. much, not so much like, like how to like, yes, like the importance of investing where you can invest your money and, and stuff like that. But like, you know, you're not going to be getting stock tips from this type of right. information. Like this is, this is like repairing our relationship with money. I love so that, it. So that we can yeah. become, cause ultimately, you know, it's about being financially healthy. Right. Um, and for me, like sitting down with somebody that has a ton of credit card debt, yeah, your investments might be doing really, really well. And you might be making a lot of money, but you're spending a lot of money. Right. Right. And unnecessary exactly. areas. There's a lot of different factors. So yeah. um, I'm just really excited for it. I think it's, it, you know, it's just, you know, the, the, the millennial universe is continuously growing. Do, um, do you know what date are you going to do specific days? You're just going to kind of pop on with different people. And then that way, you know, I was even thinking about it. A lot of our listeners too, while we do have people live and they comment, um, I, on the back end of the streaming, all the other platforms, see how many people either listen or download. So we do have a lot of people that are really listening after, 
we do it live. So I think it's a great thing that we have that opportunity to have it live. And we're, we're here so that it's real. It's a conversation. We're not editing. We didn't plan it. It's not, you know, scripted. <laughs> but I don't think we could. Like, if we, if we really, like, I thought about that the other day. Like, yes, like, it's great to plan content out and plan, like, generally what you're going to talk about. But I don't think the way that both of our minds work, I don't think we would be very good with scripted content. Like it's got to be really off yeah. the cuff for us. Like, yeah, and I make bullet points if it's something that it's yeah, either something course. that I don't know about or something like I I don't want to forget my thoughts, right? Like I put bullet bullet, bullet points, but it's just uh, something that I can then reference so that I don't forget to talk about it, right? Yeah. So I think it's that'll be really neat. So you know, if there isn't a specific day, all I'm saying is like I think it would be great um, that you just if you just did it cause I have to get more consistent with my Monday, um, you know, my, my mindful, because I had a couple of people that were going to join me and then didn't. And I don't know if I want to do it by myself. So that was where I kind of didn't do it for two weeks. So I have to either like just record it and put something out. If I'm not going to do it live, I think I'm better with somebody live um, yeah. or I'm better by myself, like just pre-recording it, just like a, a five or 10 minute, you know, something that's shorter. So it's not that conversation, but um, I think you doing this will help me get even just more consistent with it. And then I, you know, I just think that you could just put out once a week, all the podcasts that I listen to, you know, it's not, they're not every day or they're not, you know, they might just put it out once a week or they might put it out every other day. They don't really necessarily give a day, de- you know, give that. So I think it would be just cool that you could, you could even do it and then we can post it up that people can even just get, listen to it whenever that week. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, I'm thinking if you're doing Mondays, right. I think if I follow it up with Tuesday, maybe or cool. Tuesday. Or, yeah. I think Tuesday would be really fun. Yeah. Um, I, I you know, talk on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday, and, yeah. And um, I still want to do, and we talked about this, like, I don't, I don't think what's burning with Billy is going to go away. Like that's still going to be there. Right. Um, that's going to be, that's just a whole different feel of of information like that's just right. that that's more so yeah just like it's just going to be a different conversation so it's not going right. to be so much more as money driven as 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 the money talk right i like it because it's in like you're kind of pinpointing into like a niche that you can then know that what you're going to be talking about i mean there's so many different things about money with the relationships like you said and the emotion behind it and even like history family history block it like you know we have these like blockers about money and things that have happened about feeling worthiness and shame about money and there's so many different things that you can hit that i'm excited because yeah i'm gonna bring on some uh you know i just met with a um she's um her name's uh, her name's Michelle. I want to have her have her on the podcast. She's a hypnotherapist. Oh wow! She's actually Vic, uh, what's the name of the company? Victory Mindset. Do you okay. know? You have you seen him on the Central PA group a couple um, of times? I'm not sure, but maybe. Um, but cool. anyways, real interesting conversation with her, especially about money. So I'd definitely like to have her on just the normal podcast, the Millennial. But I also I, I think it'd be really interesting to have her talk about. You know, because you're right, the psychology behind money, we all bring our own baggage and that yeah. baggage is often come, stems from our childhood and yeah. how our parents interacted with money. Um, you know, so it, it's it's yeah, there's just a lot of different a lot of different layers there um, when it comes to how we treat I money. And then so I'm, I'm super excited. So, I'll, so I saw a couple of people jump on. So we'll pop up the logo one more time. There it is, the money talk, the talk we should have had. Uh, so <laughs> I <love> so, <laughs> I'm um, excited. Let's dive in, everybody. <laughs> so, but uh, changing gears, right? Um, you know, one of the big things that us millennials pride ourselves on, I think, well, I know, uh, is, is that we grew up in two worlds, right? We grew up in the non-technology world and we grew up, I don't want to say non-technology, but minimal technology world. And now we're like adulting through a high technology world, right? So we've seen a lot when it comes to, I mean, who doesn't remember the AOL days? Dial up, you know, if somebody got on the phone, like it interrupted the connection, right? You're in chat rooms. Yeah. (laughs) 
That's and, so uh, and now where we're at. And so before we jumped on today, I was telling Mel about this new thing. And let me know if in the chat, if you guys heard about this, you know about this, give me a thumbs up if you've heard about this or if you haven't, let us know either way. But there's this new thing called chat GPT. Now, Mel, before I told you about it, what had, what did you hear about it? I've never heard of the uh, the name itself. I mean, I've been hearing a lot more with AI and artificial intelligence of writing things, but I just really heard something lately about automating things like ads or copy, you know, like posts that pe that it can be done for you. That's really all I've heard. Yeah. So um, the reason we're bringing this up is because it, you know, if if you listen to Gary V right um he called this out about three to four years ago that this was coming um and nobody took him seriously and, and now here we are right um i think that i think that dude was probably a time traveler at this point yeah right. um but this chat gpt thing is absolutely nuts so it's a free app right now um it's not even an app it's just a, a web web based but you doubt you can have it on your phone but essentially what you can do is you can ask this thing questions and it really answers questions for you in a very thoughtful way, almost in a human like way. Okay. And so for me, that automatically raises concerns, but I, I'll give you an example here. So I legit like just, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it up. Right. So like I asked it, right to give me 20 ideas for live videos to help millennials with their finances and it legit gave me 20 ideas like how to save for retirement credit card management how to negotiate bills how to start a side hustle how to start a small business how to save for wow. a vacation just like idea after idea after idea and it just began like it just began to like I was really excited and really scared at the same time. Right. I mean, I love it because, you know, it gives you ideas. I think there are a lot of people that aren't creative, you know, and they. Brandon's here. <laughs> All right. New Brandon, box. Brandon is probably more qualified to talk about chat GPT than we yes. are. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but it's interesting that there's, there's a lot of good and a lot of, I don't want to use the word bad, but there's things that are going to come up that this is eliminating people actually doing the work themselves, which is exactly what AI, which is exactly why they're introducing this, is to have the artificial intelligence do it and not have a person, but how human-like, you know, with emotion and with that, or does it really matter because you just want content? You, this is, that is giving you ideas. That's interesting. It's not just writing the content for you where it's, Hey, yeah. I need to put these posts out and you know, you don't want to write the post or you're not good at it or you don't have time. Um, there's actually giving you ideas. Uh, that's really interesting. So that, that's like I mean, people's job. Yeah. That's what people yeah. get hired to do is consulting. Yeah. So it's going back to your thought, like, good versus versus bad like i can see it both ways too because for the simple fact like like for me like i hate content planning right, right. like i hate doing it right. and and to be able to be like and sit down and like plan your content for a whole week seems exhausting but now oh, yeah. being like hey i want to do xyz this month like pr produce me five posts right Wow. And, and all of a sudden, like that's taken care of. So like, like, so I can see the benefit in it, but like, I can also be really scared about it because is it going to, like, are people, is it going to replace people? I mean, that's the, isn't that the goal? I mean, does, was there something that Gary Vee was saying a couple years ago and, or like what they're saying now that is that the goal? So that, I mean, you don't, I mean, I mean cause it's out too then it's almost eliminating certain people's, like I said, like why would you go to a company and hire them? Or if you're already hiring somebody, if you're saying, well, do I really need to use them anymore? 
Yeah. Or or the person that you hired is just using Chat GPT to to <laughs> to produce your content. Like is it generic to yeah, how how personal is it? I mean, I know you're asking this specific questions, but here's another thing. Is that going to go same exact content that could be for somebody else? So then there's yeah. two people that have the almost the same exact content. And that goes back to even some of the graphics like we talk about with Canva, where there's two or Vistaprint. You know, you go on there and you want to just get a cheap logo or, it's you know, get business cards and they give it to you for free. And it's just this generic thing, but everybody and their sister has it and their brother and their, you know, the store here and the store there down the street could have the same one. Yeah. The people that are using the same. So what I think is going to be different in the sense here is, is like on Canva, for instance, it's not thinking for you necessarily. It's like, you still have to go in you have to figure out the logo that you want. You have to put it it together. It's more visual. yeah. Yeah. But, but here What's really interesting about ChatGPT and artificial intelligence in general is that this thing learns, like it has the mm. ability to learn how you ask the question. It it um, it learns what like what answers you like. It learns it just and it it's always evolving. The the other thing is is that um is that ChatGPT um, also. Um, it depends going back to your original question it it depends on what you input is what you're going to get out so if you if i put in something that i would normally write but i'd be like hey i need you to write me an ebook on this subject in this tonality and i want you to use these words and this and you, the more details you give it the better chat pt operates but if you just Give, hey, write me an ebook on how to save money. Probably, and you did the exact same thing. You'd probably, we, we might get the same. We have to try that. Like, see if we get the exact same answer. Yeah, because it, it's interesting and in how much, even if you give it like so much detail, um, it, that it's writing this almost for you. It's, it's just basically eliminating all the work, the time and work that it goes into it. Anybody can do it then. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's 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 really, really, really crazy. Is it like, something that you think is going to be taking away also the human because of how we we have to think about those things? Or we well, okay, maybe we don't do it. Maybe we hire somebody to do it. But for the people who do those things themselves, so the writing the book or writing you know, just letters or something, you know, or however it is, is it, are we going to get away from actual expression of our own words? I mean, and we're just going to rely on other, this, you know, AI to express things. I mean, we could be writing, who knows if it's going to be really written by anybody, if it's like a letter or. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying a love letter, you know? Yeah. And like, like you think about the school related stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. it's going to be able to write papers for people, right? It's going to be able to like answer questions for people. And how would the teacher know if they wrote it or not? How yeah. do they get caught? How do people, how do people find out? They're just, I mean, listen, the truth always comes out. Okay. Karma is a bitch. And you're going to slip up and probably tell somebody who tells somebody who tells somebody. But Well, now they're creating artificial intelligence to recognize other artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my gosh, guys, I almost um, choked on my, my So uh, it's like, it's like uh, there's a movie that was out a few years ago with Leonardo DiCaprio's Inception, right? Yeah, it's like, I love that it's, movie. Uh, it's a great movie. But, um, but yeah, I, that's where we're going to have a, a get into a point like, like, you know, I was listening to Joe Rogan and he was talking about like, imagine, cause this, this is just the infancy stage, right? Like this right. is just like, just answering these questions. Um, it can't have a conversation with you yet, but it, this is, this is going to get to a point where it's asking you a question back to maybe clarify or right. get more information. But like, Hey, I don't have enough information. What do you mean by X, Y, Z? Do you, or did you really mean this? And now 
Now you're right. having a conversation and just imagine them. I mean, we already have robots, right. right? They're going to put this into a robot. Right. And cars that are driving them, you know, I mean, like driving themselves practically, but I'm more interested. I don't know. I mean, this idea of there being the AI to determine what is written by an AI, like that's even more interesting because that's almost like artificial intelligence to police the artificial intelligence that people are using to try to see. And I'm, I'm curious if it's going to be a certain lingo that's, you know, how that, how that's going to work. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm really interested in, cause we know what social media did to the world. Right? right. And that was just humans interacting with other humans, posting content, stuff like that. Like I can only, um, yeah, I can only imagine what is going to happen in the next three to five years with this thing. Yeah. It's really interesting because, you know, I, I look at it even in just texting and emailing or, you know, tell me something to say, create an excuse for, you know, this, I can't go do this or give me a, something to tell my significant other. I care about them. You know I mean? Just almost like things that you can't come up well, with yourself. Let's, let's, let's do it live. Let's do something live. I tried uh, to log in, but it's not letting me. All right. So this. I'm going to start. So it gets bogged down because a lot of people use it, but yeah. like, so what I've done is like, once you get in, you just leave, leave that screen open. And you, if you have to search for something, you just, you go to a different screen, right? Okay. Like if you have an iPhone, right? Yeah. So, um, so let's start a new chat. What's a, what's a question. If somebody's watching and you want us to ask a specific question to chat, uh, uh, I, I think it's Valentine's Day is coming up. I think I would like to see what it says about write. Tell me what to write in my wife's Valentine's Day card to tell her that I love her. All right. I'm putting know. that I mean, in. I don't so know tell how to pro propose the question. But. Tell, uh, all right. So I'm going to write me. This is fun. Write me a paragraph. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Write me a paragraph to tell or, uh, my wife. Yeah, my wife. I love her on Valentine's Day or how much I love her on Valentine's Day or something and care about her. I don't know. All right. So write me a paragraph telling my wife how much I love her and care for her on all right, we'll do that. We'll see what it says. So it is a form of almost Google, which you could ask. You know, if you Googled, um, sometimes I do this because I want to get examples of generic Valentine's Day cards, you know, for mm -hmm. new, what, what they should say. So I do Google and say, you know, words, greetings for inside a Valentine's Day card, you know, for wife. But... Um, you still have to Google it. You still have to copy and paste it. You still have to skim through it. You know what I mean? So there's, I, I remember you saying that, that there Google's worried that it might replace Google, but I think it's a little different. Yeah. That having... it's, it's more specific that you can get them to write something versus just looking up an A. So a this is the only downfall with sometimes it gets bogged down because there's so many people that are using it. So give me a second. I'm trying to, uh, I'm just saying, write a love letter to my wife, Megan. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay. So. Something easy. Yeah, something easy. But I mean, it is it is scary, and really, I, I mean, I just think about what it's going to do to, like, I even think about my industry. Like, mm -hmm. is it going to replace financial advisors? Like, do you really like? Mm. Do you know, because there's the robo advisor, right? But like, is it, could it replace me? Could it replace right. a teacher? Like, do you really need to have a teacher or you could the, could it just speak? Cause uh, what they want to do is give it, give it a voice. 
so it like speak it's like almost like siri or the other person right, in the room because right. if i say the other name it'll i know uh, <laughs> what if i mean what if this is also i mean we've seen movies um about like the girlfriend like the girl that was artificial intelligence you know whether yeah. she was like a hologram or i don't know like kind of it was like from the 80s maybe i forget but there's these movies about where the guy like fell in love with the artificial intelligence girl. Do you know what I'm talking about? Was there one, there was a more recent one too. That was actually, she was not real. I think Scarlett Johansson might've been in that one, but there was an older one too, where it was something about like a futuristic uh, yeah, assist there... assistant or something. And he like kind of was like falling in love with the girl, but like, what if it was also like replaces an actual person that's terrifying like yeah that's terrifying <laughs> like as a well yeah but it could be like a relationship or even like parenting like if you want like if somebody wanted to have something like not parenting their kids but I mean so many people have them watching tv but it's wild yeah I think I think the system's bogged down. I've tried a couple of okay, times. Okay, we will try to paste. We will try to paste what it says. See how good. Let's it try is. one more time. Write me. Write me a love, love letter, to my wife Megan. Yeah, uh, something's going on with it. Let's see. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll try to post it. But I we do know that. Um, Billy did try it for making some bios, right? Yeah, I and did. Um, I, I mean, they were I, great. yeah, like I, I did the bio. Um, there was just a lot of things that I was, I just got so like enthralled. I was like, well, do this, do this. Can I do this? Can I do I that? I don't even know if Billy's answering me if he's, if it's even him. Yeah, it could. It, I, this could be all previously written by <laughs> Chat GPT. This say could not least. be real at all. Billy yeah. could be fake. This could be a hologram. Like you have no idea. Like this could be. I don't know if it's even him anymore texting me back. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it's going to be. It's just like you're going to hit a mode, right, where you could be like <laughs> an auto auto. You, 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 you could connect it to your text messages and your emails, and it just automatically populates auto a message. Right? Back. Yes, we're like, Next oh, we'll take care know, of that. Next thing you know, someone's like, I have no idea for the last year that I've like what I've been doing at work. I've just been an autopilot with the the chat you know the ai and the person you know and like in the relationship with somebody they're like texting back and forth and it's like just, they're not even they're just talking to a yeah uh, technology no but it's it, it is good i just i'm just like you said it's really cool technology but i'm just fearful that like in that movie you were describing, I've, Joe Rogan actually talks about it. And the, like the problem with AI, right, is going to be like, it's going to understand how we think. It's going to understand our human emotions, but it's not going to have any emotion itself. So if it. Right. Um, well, I didn't oh, watch it. I just pulled it up. It's Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson. I was right. I think I just seen commercials for it. She was a artificially intelligent virtual assistant personified through a female voice. And I think, didn't he like, I think that was what, what did, what was the concept that. So he said that Nell, like, yeah. Nell's here and she said, Hey, I I've used it to write a Facebook post. I just didn't feel right about it. <laughs> Laugh out loud. He gets bogged down almost oh. daily. Um, and it, it depends on what time of day you use it. Like right now, I, I bet like everybody's on it because uh, it's like Friday and work. But I'll give you an example, right? So I have been using Chat GPT for some of my Facebook posts. Oh, okay. And so I will. So um, the last one. So let's see. I wrote it. Let's see the last one I wrote. Um, okay. So I wrote a post about budget versus no budget, and it has the picture of, uh, the guy that played Captain America. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's like ripped, 
but uh, he has a shirt, a really tight shirt on, and it's like, you know, he looks really ripped. And then he has, it's the same photo, but he's in a looser fitting shirt, so he doesn't look as ripped. Mm-hmm. And that. that that entire post was written by ChatGPT. Wow. Even it even gave me hashtags to hashtag. Did you have to ask that, or did you? Did you? No, I just said, write me a Facebook post. Okay, so so it included the hashtags because it knows that we should be using them. And so, and I'm on professional mode on Facebook. Okay. Right. So, I compared a normal post that I normally write versus what ChatGPT. Okay. And this one particular got. A thousand impressions. So an impression just means the number of people that saw that post, right? Okay. Um, or or po- and post reach. So it it's that's the amount of people that saw it. So the very next post above it was what I per- it was just a personal post, right? It had two hundred and thirty five people saw it. Wow! So it's getting so, even the analytics behind it is. So okay. there's something to be said for writing a post with chat, chat, chat GPT. I think it's going to get better, especially the more information that you. Uh, so I don't feel bad about it. Like, huh. I don't feel bad about posting that. Like if you are right. because especially because like if you're stressed for time, you know, what you want to post, you just don't have the time to put the words. Right. But you're like, this is the idea I have. Like, help me. Right. And being able to put it into something that's good. And I, I think it's no different than paying a digital marketing company to do your ads and your right, copywriting for you. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it's kind of, you're not doing it yourself. So and I, and, and you're, I think, you're paying somebody. I think if you're a small business owner and you don't have the budget quite yet to, like you're just starting out, like I think this could be a great tool for you. I think eventually you do want to hire somebody to do it for you because they like chat G G P T doesn't understand your business. Doesn't know the feel of your business. Doesn't right. Like, and your customers and, and stuff like that. And doesn't personality, you know, and it, and it might not always ask the right questions and it might not get to the emotion of why you're emotional about your business. So I don't think it will replace it. I think it could be a great tool to help, Somebody that just started, yeah. Supplement somebody that, what you're so, doing, yeah. Somebody's just starting out. So, I mean, I kind of get what Nell's saying, you know, but I kind of get what you're saying, right? right? Like, it's like, what's the difference between if I hired somebody versus, like, I'd still be getting the same result, right? Like, right. Still be getting, and I mean, sometimes it could be people that put their, it sounds like them. You know, if it's like I'm posting stuff, I put stuff that's witty or puns, I use you know, different work, like alliteration, or I do purposeful things that you're not going to get yeah. from, unless you say, use a pun, obviously, you know, I mean, use, you know, make it witty, make a joke or something. You could have that, but you're not going to have the things that you would normally do as your own self, which is what people like about you and like your business because it's you. Yeah. So that might be interesting is just more, we, we might have to accept or get away from that. It's, it's just generic content. But I do think that ultimately, you know, I was just talking about this with several people about keeping up with social media and the content, and even just with that, you know, I mean, we want to hi- try to get somebody or, you know, an intern or this, maybe it'll be something that we could look into and in trying to get some stuff and just schedule it out. Because it's not just, you know, if you had a whole sheet of them, 20 things, which could be for 20 days or, you know, whatever, you know, copying and pasting them and scheduling in the back end of Facebook, it would take five minutes to do all of those 20, but it would take an hour or more potentially. I don't know. I'm just making this up to come up with everything and write it yourself. Yeah. So you are really eliminating that time. I don't know if it gives you, does it give you the picture? Did it give you the one of um, Chris or whatever, the guy, the actor? Uh, you it, to it, find that? Yeah. It, it's, it told me what picture to go look for. Oh, okay. So it, it kind of, yeah. Okay. It won't, it's not at the point where it's going to generate you a picture or a logo or something like Google, that. It has to pull it, but it does say, I did look up the movie. I'm an, an article about the movie. It's called her. And there, somebody is writing that they think that it could be possible for the movie to almost have true with the, with what Scarlett Johansson's kind of character in 2029. 
So you said about how it could really change things in the next three to five years. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's big. I mean, it, I mean, there's a reason why Google is scared of this. Like right. Google is terrified of this. Um, Microsoft just bought it basically. So, oh, okay. And, it does. And, it, go ahead. It says yeah, it's chat, the chat, chat capacity is, is that capacity right now? We'll notify you when we're back. Yeah. So the millennial uh, um, broke the broke it. Yeah, yeah we broke we broke it, guys. We, we broke the we, internet, guys. We, we were, we were hey, breaking Sam. news. Um, Sam, um, hey there. What's going on, Sam? Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it's just interesting. It's just like, and I feel like as millennials, like. I feel like people that are older than us are probably really terrified of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But I think as millennials, I think we'll embrace it um, and actually use this thing compared to maybe like generations above us. I, I, you know, there's no telling what the generations below us, but I mean, I know I'm going to be a user of it just because. Yeah, I think it, it, it depends some time. on what it's for. I think it depends on what it's for. I don't think I like Nell saying that she wasn't sure that she, you know, she didn't feel right about it. I also think there's people who like it doesn't feel authentic or it doesn't feel because you wrote it. I can absolutely understand that. And then, you know, I would never use it to like write my paper for school, but there's so many people that would, you know, and that I mean, even Ari, you know, not saying that younger people or, you know, if you procrastinate or you don't know or you, you, you know, you don't even just, you just don't want to do it. I mean, there's so many reasons, but I think that there's things that I would, I would actually feel bad doing. Like I would feel bad having it write stuff that I know I should be writing personally. But I think that there's so many other things that I've done, like looking up certain, um, you know, for greeting card, you know, for the Valentine's Day cards, I need 10 different generic sayings because I'm, you know, making a variety of cards and I just want to have some really nice sentiments, you know, I don't sometimes write, you know, or sometimes I tweak them. I use it as a base, but, um, you know, I'm more creating the graphics on the outside and I'm, I'm having, you know, some of those other things I would use for that stuff, but I don't think I would use it. I know I wouldn't use it in a, in the wrong way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, like what I watched a YouTube video on this and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap up here, but I was watching a YouTube video where 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 I was really just kind of just like, whoa, this is nuts. Um, there's so it was originally programmed to help programmers, oh. and so what they would do is like, if they were writing code for their computer or something like that, and they were getting an error, they would send it over to Chat GPT, and they'd be like, hey, figure out what's wrong with this code. Oh. And so That's it sophisticated. Would, it would go in and it would figure out what was wrong. So the guy put it in. He's like, hey, I'm getting this error message. Did it live. He's like, hey, I'm getting this error message. Fix this for me and then rewrite the code and then tell me how to use it. And it literally mm -hmm. just did it. Um, another thing he did was oh. like, he's like, hey, I'm struggling with my diet. These are the calories that I'm eating. This is what I'm eating. Right. My macros and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He said it was like, this is my height, my weight, my age, blah, blah, blah. And it was like what am I doing wrong? And it literally spelled out for him what he was doing wrong, what he should eat, gave him, wow. uh, gave him recipes and then gave him places that he could go buy the stuff for the recipes. So interestingly enough, it's, it almost is like having assistants or doctor, you know what I mean? Having somebody that's an expert in that field, like versus not having to get the information from them, like a nutritionist, let's just say, but it's a very specific information that you're not going to be able to just Google and find because you're saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. What am I doing wrong or how can I do it better? The technology there is actually processing it and kind of putting it back. But is it is it basically a platform that is like Google? I mean, yeah, I'm curious about the actual technology. Like my I, I, I'm hard, I, having a hard time understanding that it's it's basically, I know, I understand what artificial intelligence is. It's like basically it's, telling it to like a brain and the brain, right? Yeah. Well, it's like, basically scrubbing the entire universe of information that's on the internet. So, okay. So where, it's through the internet. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's, 
anything that was ever written, it's scrubbing that information in an instant moment and then uh. producing an answer for you. So, you know, that's where it could be good. That's where it could be bad because, I mean, if there's bad information, it's it's just going to give bad information. So there have been instances right. where it has given wrong information, but, I mean, right. I mean let's be honest. I believe you, everything on the internet's true. <laughs> But let's let's be honest. We've gone to experts before in, in areas and stuff like that, and they've been Absolutely. wrong. Like they, so I mean, yeah. it's but it's it's just it's just going to be way interesting of what's going on uh, here in the next couple of. I think by the yeah. end of this year, you'll have we'll have an app that'll be Chat GPT, and you'll right. be able to. I mean, it's going to change the way we do business. It's going to change the way yeah, we do a lot of I'm things. I'm going to have to, like, dating apps and stuff. You're going to have to be like, is this really you? I'm not on dating apps, but, you No, know, you're right, though. Is this you're really, 100%. It, you know, is it really them? Or is it, like, generating what it says, you know, what they think you want to hear? Well, you know, it's like being with a chat. Like, if you, like, are on a website, a you know bot. how they have, the, they have those chat bots? And yeah. If you ask out a question that maybe it doesn't know the answer to or it's not – pre-programmed like it's just like oh well just go this is going to be able to be like have an actual conversation back and forth right so it's 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 going to be it's going to be quite quite interesting i will be i will be interested to see that and also how they how they turn it into you know if it's not free obviously it's getting bogged down so there's you know there's things that are going on but if they try to like you know charge for the app or you know what they end up doing um, or if it's going to continue to be free. But I also think that, I, you know, I think it would be concerning for the, like, school, you know, people in education fields using it to write papers and getting out of writing it themselves. But, yeah, um, I yeah, actually, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting year with, with, technology yeah. it's only going to get faster um but but anyways i mean interesting I, I think i think that's a good place to kind of just end today's live um but we'd like to do a couple of things before we do that um and i have the video everybody if you went on instagram and facebook i promised that i would pl- i would cut it i did and I posted it, and I didn't bring it into the <laughs> the back end today. But I so we can, I think we can post it as a video clip, and I can just hit it, and it okay. and it and it will play. But I'll it is the millennial meme of the week. I love it. It sounds just like it. From it sounds exactly like how chat, you it. Because yeah, I'm Chat GPT. You didn't know. Oh, that. exactly. Like, so that's why it sounds the bot. same every time <laughs> coming out. No wonder. Um, so anyways, it was my week, it was my week for the, uh, for the millennial meme. So in, in honor of, uh, chat GPT, I, th- <laughs> I popped this <laughs> up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, it's, it, for those that are not watching, it's a picture of a, of a funeral. There's a, there's a tombstone. It looks like somebody, it looks like there's a funeral going on. One guy is, uh, kind of like leaning into the, uh, to the grave site and he's throwing up the peace sign. And so on the grave stone, it says the Google, Google search bar. And then <laughs> like, like it's dead. And then the guy uh, who's throwing up the peace sign is chat. G- 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 <laughs> so uh, it, that's, that's the fear really that Google has that it will replace Google. Yes, uh, that's a good so, one. I like but it. yeah, I thought, I thought that was, super funny so uh but there's also another moment uh that we like to do at the end of the show and that is simply mel's moment yes so um that is where we typically like to uh where where mel gets a little bit extra time to tell us maybe a piece of advice uh maybe maybe she's typing hey i need a mel's moment i do i'm waiting (laughs) chat gpt it's Um, too slow (laughs) Um, but uh, it's a, it's a piece of advice. It's taking us into the weekend. It's setting us up for success. So anyways, Mel, take it away. I would say that, um, you know, while there's going to be opportunities for using technology like this, I think that we ultimately 
need to stand behind like now with our authenticity. You know, I think right now a lot of people want transparency, want authenticity. You know, I think that we can pick and choose when we're using things like this. Um, but we have to remember to also do things, you know, we're selling ourselves, we're selling our company. Um, I think we need to really keep that human connection um, going because it's really lost with technology. So I think that there's a fine line between that. Um, you know, I was just talking to somebody about a bunch of ideas and creative ideas for something. Um, you know, I, I, I'm actually going to try to see if it gives me the same creative ideas that I came up with and to see how good it is, you know, compared to my ideas. So, you know, maybe we use it to compare, you know, to get additional ideas. What is that? Chat GPT is currently writing Megan a love letter. Oh my goodness, guys. Listen, I think that we can use this, uh, you know, to help, but um, let's not get out of hand here. Uh, get it out of hand, you know, out of our own hands. It's not going to come up with witty, funny puns. Like, you know, it might, I, I don't know, but I think we have to, uh, you know, stay true to ourselves, even though, you know, this technology might be coming out. I think, you know, people still want us, you know, to be, to be us. I think, I think, I think I should read this really quick and then we'll end the show with this, so right? My dearest Megan, <laughs> words cannot express the depths of my love for you. For the mo from the moment I met you, I knew you were the one for me. Every day I am grateful for the love and the happiness that you bring to my life. You're my rock, my confidence, my best friend. I'm so lucky to have you by my side through all of life's ups and downs. I can't imagine going through this journey called life without you. I love you. I love the way you laugh, the way you smile, the way you look at me. I love the way you make me feel and when I am with you. I love you. I, lo I love you the way you love me. I promise I will always be there for you, to support you, and to love you with all my heart. I will cherish I will cherish our time together and the memories that we that we will have forever and always, Billy. Oh my! <laughs> God. I can't right there, this. guys. Okay, there it first is. of all, I hope, dear Lord, I know Billy feels this way about his wife and Megan. Okay, so this is very true. But um, wow, all like, I can say, <laughs> like wow. holy crap i mean these are like wedding that was like almost like even like a wedding vow like it can, <laughs> i mean that's where i'm gonna say guys you know don't I be think, cheating don't be cheating on uh you know with these easy cutting corners here a hundred percent more usage of chat gpt is gonna be a male male ver male user versus like for that oh, type of stuff, yeah. like writing letters. And I am not going to trust no man. <laughs> be, I, that's nuts, I am right? astounded by this. Wow, Billy, you really showed us something today that is a game changer. Yep. Yep. I love it. I love it. Well, anyways, guys, that's it for today's show. We, we appreciate everybody that jumped on. There's a ton of people that jumped on today. Tons of likes. We really appreciate yes, it. Awesome. Next time you, you're jumping on, make sure you comment. Let us know that you're here. Comment. Yeah. We want, we'd hi. love to get your, uh, your, your input on what we're talking about today. So uh, well, I'll send that love letter or we'll post it in the, in, oh on the millennial gosh. page. Oh, my gosh. Love um, letter to Meg. The love letter to Meg written by ChatGPT. So, but anyways, guys, make sure you check us out every Friday for another episode of the Millennial and for and very and coming very soon, right? The first podcast, yeah. the first show, the money talk, the talk we should have had, will be Love dropping it. here live soon. I'll probably have Chat GPT write me a bunch of topics. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might be doing this for Monday Mindful too, because I need you know if my, if my guests aren't available anymore, then I need to do it by myself, and I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a whole bullet points. I don't help. Actually, me. you can ask. I asked it. I said, write me a five-minute script for a Facebook Live, and I want it based wow. on this. So the last live I did was a was a Chat GPT written live. Wow. So, did you do? Like, did you read it, or did you? It was a more bulleted. Can you do bulleted? Bullet, yeah, yeah. It's is it was wow. all bullet points. I might try so, this, guys. 
I mean, yeah. I have the topic and I know what I want to set. You know, I know. Yeah, you can I be like, I wanna, this is the topic. Um, These are the points I want to hit. Write me a five minute video wow. or five minute script on on this so that I can do a Facebook Live. And it wow. and it'll do it in two seconds. So wow. um, Nell says she's excited for uh, I told her about the idea as well. Yeah. So she's she's super excited. Okay. Uh, but anyways, guys, we appreciate everybody that jumped on, commented, liked it. We will be seeing you next Friday for another episode of Millennial. So we'll see you guys. Have a good weekend.